What's up, Divas and Devos? It's your girl, April. So today it is Real Talk Wednesday, as you guys know. And for this big, fluffy madness that I have on my crown right here, I actually made this wig like over two years ago. Um, I can't remember what wig brand hair it was. I don't remember if it was Model Model. I know it wasn't sensational. I, honestly, I've been trying to rack my brain for the longest to think about which brand of wig this was okay and for the life of me i could not remember but it is um they don't call it virgin they call it like their raw natural something like that but it, i know it's bohemian curl i just cannot remember so i made this wig they sent me the hair and i made this like two years ago and sometimes i like it sometimes i don't i think it has a lot to depend on the mood that i'm in but get this, this was the very first wig I made with one of those little circle closures, you know, like very small little closures that look like they're this big. And all you can do is sit them in the middle. Um, so that's what I made with it. I made this with it um, on a regular dome cap, you know, and just sewed the tracks in a circle. This was the very first one I ever made. And I will be, uh, will be honest and say it came out really good. Um, for the first time of me ever doing one like this. Um, but I didn't record it. So I know there were a lot of people on Instagram asking me where did I get it, details. There is no details, honey. I sat there and made this and was like, okay, how am I gonna do this? So I think I did damn good. But it was long, it was really long when I first got it. Not like really long, but it was probably like up to here and it was wild and I didn't want to wear it like that because I just didn't so I just chopped it up as the time went on I think I chopped it up even sh um like just really short one day like this I mean it was already short but I just I just really went in on it and I like it it all depends on the mood I'm in like so yesterday I wore it again and I hadn't worn it probably for like a year and a half I think I was just getting like that big curly afro type of like vibe and yeah, I just decided I'm going to put it on today. I mean, yesterday. And then I'm going to put it on today. So you guys know um, the days I do this is Tuesday. Um, oh, last time it was Monday, but it's Halloween today. Trick or treat, bitches. Trick or motherfucking treat. Um, so, yeah, I am going trick or treating with the kids, of course. And I... I always bring a bag because I just feel like this. If I got to walk with you guys to take you guys trick-or-treating, I got to get some shit out of this too. Like seriously, like I don't know if you guys feel that way, but me as an adult, if I had to sit, stand out here and walk with you guys to get fucking candy, a bitch going to have her motherfucking satchel too. Like, um, yeah, yeah you're going to have to put something up in here. Now, mind you, I won't eat it, but if I'm, if I'm, I may eat it once in a blue, but cause I don't eat candy like that, but if I feel like I'm in the mood, I'll eat it, but you gonna have, I'm, I'm gonna need some shit too. Like, I'm just saying, I'm gonna need some candy too. So we are going to go trick or treating. Mumsy made her costume. She is that little green creature from Monsters, Inc. Mike Wazowski. She made her costume and it was like, wow, really, really nice. Um, and Tinky, my grandson, he is going to be a robot. I'm gonna just be me, the bitch that I am. Okay, maybe I'll put on witch's hat. And Tati, she actually is Catwoman because she got to wear her costume to work, so she'll probably wear it for trick or treating. And Nay, she is a cat, um, a leopard. She's a cat too. So I'm the only one that doesn't have a costume. I guess I could just put on a mask, like a little masquerade mask, but I'm not really into all of that shit. I just want to just get the candy, okay? So yeah, today is trick or treat, and I have on one of my favorite shirts. Okay, now you know something I noticed that I know a lot of you guys know about my other favorite shirt, and I know that you guys do because when you see me wear it in the video, you always say, "You got your favorite shirt on." I know you're happy today. I've had that shirt for like 11 years now, and I absolutely love it. It's from Target. It's given out though. It's given out. There's a little hole right here, which you know I'm gonna go ahead and you know, sew that up, but I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. And this one now, you've guys seen me in this quite a few times too. This one is, um, a, a year old and, it, um, and I actually really do love this shirt. It's from forever 21 and it is their, um, from their plus section zero. Um, it's a zero plus or whatever size zero something. And I absolutely love it because the material, it feels really soft and it kind of reminds me of that same feeling of my other one, but it's longer and I absolutely love this shirt. Like, oh, I love this shirt. I love it because it's long, so you can definitely wear like leggings and I love these leggings. Like I went back to Target 
the other day and bought another pair of these leggings. Like, you ever buy some leggings and they're so fucking cheap? Like, they're thin. You can see through them. I hate those. But I bought these from Target to wear to New York. And I did so. And they were 14 bucks. They, they're really thick. They're nice and thick so you don't see through them. They're made of really good quality. And I like the knee cut out on them. Now, I've seen many different ones that have the knee cut out on them. But when you see the knee cut out on them, the material is rolling up. Not with these, okay? Not with these bad boys. They don't roll up because they're sewn, okay? So it's this is good quality. So being that I am losing so much weight, um, I did get these. They were a double XL because, you know, they're in the, um, the junior section, most SEMO or whatever brand. I had to go back and get another pair. So I got a pair a few days ago, and they're size extra large. I haven't taken the tag off of them yet because... Um, I'm just saving them, okay? I'm just saving them for a good, good, good occasion. But these one, they, they, you know, they're not as tight up here on me, but you know that's okay. But so yeah, so I've actually lost five weeks ago. I was 217 pounds, and to this day, today I am 199 pounds. Now, if y'all remember, like a couple of weeks ago, I did like a real talk video. And I was telling you guys that I got on the scale that morning and I was probably like, I don't remember, I think I was like 207 or 209, something like that in that range. And then I got back on a scale that night and it said 197. You know, I was like, okay, I know I ain't losing no weight, but I, then I got back off and it got back on and it just kept dropping in weight. I was like, okay, yeah, um, I wish I was a motherfucking 197, but a bitch ain't that. So needless to say, by the end of this week, hopefully I will be like a nine, a 197 because it seems like I just lose like maybe a pound every day or every other day. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like really happy about that. The only thing that I don't like about it when you lose weight is you have to buy all new clothes. And like, I don't really like spending my money all the time, um, especially when you're trying to save. And like, I think I have like, I have a shitload of clothes in my closet already. So I really don't be trying to, um, I just don't want to spend so much on clothing. Um, but it's a good thing that I get free clothes, but I just, I'm a t-shirt type of girl. So I like wearing t-shirts a lot. So yeah, I know I'm going to have to buy new t-shirts. I love t-shirts. Like I don't really go anywhere. So this is me. Like this is the stuff that I wear on like an everyday basis. And I think it looks rather fucking cute. So I have lost um, 18 pounds, and I'm, I, if you guys aren't familiar how I did that this time, it wasn't with the hydroxy cut because it worked for me, but then I had started gaining weight back again because I started drinking again. Well, I'm not an alcoholic, but, you know, I do like to have a drink every day, and that made me gain weight. You know, I don't drink to get drunk because I don't, drink, um, I don't get drunk. I just don't want to, so I know my limit, and I just don't think that it's very becoming to be sloppy drunk, or even, even if you're in your own house, it just doesn't have a really good feeling. So anyway, um, I go to the weight doctor. I found this great coupon on Groupon, okay, Groupon. And I know it's five weeks because last Friday, um, this coming Friday is my last week of, of a Groupon member. And now I could purchase another package. Um, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to try this out, this weight this weight loss center, this weight, weight doctor, this weight loss center, because there's a lot of them. And... The bitch who broke my motherfucking windows, busted my window in my car, she was telling me how she was going. Now, listen, she ain't never fucking worked out a day in her life. I would try to get her to go and walk with me. She never wanted to do that. So she was going to these weight doctors for like three years since um I had known her. You know, I've been here for four, so like three years. And she did not improve any. But she was constantly just arguing about it and pissing off about it. So I said, you know what? I'm going, to, I'm going to go to this weight doctor, weight loss program thing because I don't want to go to New York looking like, you know, bloated or, you know, I want everybody to see that I got a motherfucking neck. You know, you guys know how I be talking about, oh, I don't got no neck. I don't have no neck when I lose, when I gain weight. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that has that issue. So the main reason was I, I didn't want to go back to New York and look like I was bloated. And plus, you know, I knew I was going to see my husband. So I didn't want to look fat. You know, I wanted to look like at my best. I wanted to look sexy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Like, I just wanted to look so scrumptious. I like a motherfucking snack. Okay. I wanted to look like a motherfucking snack to him. And, um, 
So I definitely was like, you know what, April, get on your exercise thing again and make sure you look like a motherfucking meal. Fuck a snack, a motherfucking meal. All right. And so that's what I did. And I guess I did look like a motherfucking snack, meal, dessert, and all that shit to him. Okay. But so I'm still losing weight and I'm, I'm just trying to get at like one between like 180, 175. I really don't want to lose too much weight because like I said, a bitch don't want to be buying a whole bunch of new clothes. And on top of that, um, like I don't, I, I just, woo. I just really don't want to lose too much weight because then I, I will lose my ass, um, and my hips and I just look, I, I just really don't. Okay. I did buy myself an exercise ball though from the 99 cents only store for three bucks. So I did pump it up today and I did do me some squats today with it. Now, mind you, I'm going to work on that squat thing because I don't want my booty to look smaller or flabby. I just want it to look really nice. So definitely going to be working on that. And I still do my walks. I get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and I still go out there because it helps me with my knee. And I guess it helps with my weight loss too. So let me tell you, when I went to the weight doctor last Friday, because I always go once a week, you have to go once a week. Um, they tell you basically, I was talking about it, just totally forgot. So basically what they do is they help you get on a healthy eating, ha healthy eating habits. And they tell you what type of uh, metabolism you have and stuff. So honestly, my metabolism, I think it was like between a 70 and an 80 year old. It was really, really slow. And I, and they said it's because I don't eat. Like I work at home and I never have time to eat. And people think like, oh, well, you work at home. You should have time. I don't. So I would only eat like once a day. And that's my issue. And that is the reason why my metabolism was so slow. So they did prescribe me something to boost my metabolism up. And I have learned to eat properly now. So I don't really, I don't really eat a lot of meat. I just eat like chicken a lot. And I do eat a lot of salads. I eat fruits and vegetables all the time. I don't eat um, like sweets and stuff like that. Like I really don't eat those things. I don't eat like pasta. Or anything like that you know what I'm saying I just really watch what I eat and I make sure that I eat all the time not all the time but you know what I'm saying breakfast lunch and dinner and shit like that and um if I don't have time to like really eat eat then I have one of these um, shakes called high protein shakes that um, the doctor's officer told me about so I get those from Sam's Club but yeah um, and that's about it now mind you Thanksgiving is gonna be around the corner a bitch is definitely going to eat on Thanksgiving. Okay? I'm not going to be a fucking pig now because I never do pig out on Thanksgiving. I just don't feel the need to. But I will be eating some motherfucking baked macaroni and cheese, some oxtails, some um, cabbage with um, bacon in it, a turkey, ham, um, rice, uh, sweet potatoes, um, uh, macaroni salad, potato salad, deviled eggs homemade gravy that I make, um, shit, I can go on and on, because I make myself a nice, huge spread for Thanksgiving, so, um, yeah, I just hope I don't gain weight back, but anyway, so that's basically about it, um, yeah, I'm just so happy, in case you guys are like, well, what's going on with your love life, you know, you guys already know that me and my husband are back together, and I'm just so fucking happy, like, seriously, I'm like, like, I don't know. I can't even describe the happiness, but I'm just like over happy. Like if I could motherfucking do cartwheels, a bitch would do some cartwheels and a backflip or two. But those were my younger days. But like, I'm just like so happy. Like, I don't think anybody could like steal my joy right about now. I mean, there are some fucking dumb bitches that say some fuck shit, but I'm not about to let you steal my joy. I don't really think that I'll let anybody steal my joy anymore just because I'm just, I just don't try to surround myself by negative bullshit. I just really, really can't be around people that are just so negative in general like that negative shit is not cool with me and I know I keep playing with this hair because it's so full and I just don't want to look like a weirdo with it and you know what's so crazy about it I like it and then I don't like it and then every time I wear it people are outside like oh my god I love your hair your hair is so beautiful you have like such pretty hair thank you little do you know when I get home I'm gonna take it off I'm gonna take off my hair but yeah, so anyway, let's get on with this real talk. If you have a real talk that you would like to be um, like read over the internet on YouTube, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. 
and please put in the subject line real talk and if you want to change the names of those people in your email then definitely go ahead and let me know ahead of time like hey April hey bitch I don't want to head and change the names to this and that if you don't then I'm either going to change them or I'm going to assume that you've changed them other than that you know these are just my opinions I'm not telling you guys to just take them word for word and do exactly what I say in this video but these are definitely my opinions and a lot of times I use what I've been through just to kind of like help others you know what I'm saying because I think we all have been through something in our lives where we have experienced enough like trauma in our life that we can use it for certain people or like it's, it's just relatable to other subjects or to other things so you know what I'm saying that's just me and I like me unlike me like you know I'm a very down-to-earth person I, so I've been told so many times and I'm funny don't know how but I'm funny um but I just like to be honest and real with people like nobody's life is perfect you know what I'm saying we have all had a struggle in our life so at least I think so you know what I'm saying and like sometimes the struggle is still there for us but you know what I'm saying these are my opinions and this is just how I feel about certain subjects but you know take it as you want and on that note let's get into this real talk all right you guys who knows if you will read this however i need to get this off my chest i am so broken overworked and underappreciated i have been in a relationship with my kid's father for almost 18 years now we have three kids, never got married because it was all because it has always been in the back of my mind. This is not what love is. Long story short, I never had a father and always said if I have kids, their father will be there no matter what I need to endure. Needless to say, I put my happiness aside so my kids would be happy. Out of the 18 years, this man has not worked in 10 years. I hold it down. The weight of the world is on me. I cannot depend on him for anything other than babysitting the kids when I'm working. I told myself that it was okay because you do what you got to do and keep pushing. Daily, it gets harder and harder. I'm tired of being tired, living from paycheck to paycheck. We have sex once every three months or so, and honestly, it's when I'm horny and need some dick. We do a doggy style every time. We don't kiss. It lasts about five minutes or less. It's pitiful lately. I don't even get wet. I'm always mad. Why? I don't even know. I'm just unhappy. My kids love their father to death. They don't know life other than him, and it would devastate them if I left him. I forgot to mention I drink daily. I drink daily to cope. I'm depressed. Work is killing me slowly. I've been working in a call center for 15 years. It has literally sucked my soul away. I'm dying a slow death. Funny part is that I'm always smiling to mask the pain. So no one knows the hurt and sadness I feel. A defeated woman. Damn. Okay, we're just going to call her Sherry. You know something? Let me tell y'all something. A lot of people, a lot of, a lot of couples that have children... A lot of times you see that they go through some shit and they always try to like stay together for the sake of the kids. You know what I'm saying? Like we just going to stay together for the sake of the kids. And then some of them will wait until the kids are like old enough. And then that's when they decide to go get a divorce. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then that's kind of like fucked up for the kids because all this time you've been living a lie for these kids to just because of these kids. And then there are some relationships that, oh, we're going to stay together for the sake of the kids. But the relationship is so fucked up, they yelling, they fighting, they arguing, and then are they just not getting along that the kids can sense this shit. And that kind of like fucks the kids up too. Let me say something like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, first of all, Sherry, you've been with the same man for, for 18 years. You got three children by him. You've never been uh, married to him. Out of them 18 years, this motherfucker hasn't worked in 10 years. Let me tell you something. I don't 
find it attractive at all to be with a man that ain't got no fucking source of income or ain't even worried about having a source of income. Like, I don't give a fuck how cute and handsome you are or how good your dick might be in the bed. Nigga, if you ain't got no fucking source of income, no employment, okay, let's keep that straight, unemployment. I'm not talking about when I say source of income, that's why I had to switch it up real quick. Not no drug money, okay? I'm talking about real employment or you got your own self self-paid business not no fucking drug business but you know what i'm saying not standing on the corner selling dvds and cds neither all right but i don't find it attractive to, to be fucking with a man that ain't motivated and ain't got no type of you know what i'm saying self-pride self-worth for himself like how the fuck do you be a man and sit at home for 10 motherfucking years and watch the kids while your wife Bust her ass at fucking work. Like, I mean, me personally, if that was me as a man, I just wouldn't even feel good as a person. And I wouldn't even feel good as a person as a woman. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know some people be like, well, she could stay home, she the wife, and blah, blah, blah. She could cook and she could do this. But I like to have my own shit. I like to have my own motherfucking money. I like to just be able to get up and go. I ain't trying to ask nobody for shit. I'd be damned if I'm going to ask a man, oh, well, can I get a few dollars? Or, you know what I'm saying? Where's my allowance, daddy? Or, nah. Nah, nah, it ain't even about to go down like that. Like, I need my own shit. Like, those days of housewives and shit, that might still be, like, reality to some women. Like, really, it might be reality to some women, but... You know what? As for me, I'm not. It ain't in a reality for me because you never know. This man could up and leave your ass tomorrow because he just tired of you, or it, it could be anything. He just tired in general, and then you have nothing, nothing to fall back on. Or he could die. He could die today or tomorrow, and you have nothing and nothing to fall back on. You know what I'm saying? So like. For me, I just feel like in all avenues, regardless of how good your relationship is with your husband or a man or spouse or wife or whatever, I feel like everybody should be able to have, make their own income and be themselves because I'm not trying to depend on nobody. Like, it's great. Okay, I could depend on you. Good. But I still want to have my own because something may happen to you where we got to depend on me. And now we got this nigga at home. You know what I'm saying? Sherry's boyfriend, baby daddy, okay? Because that's all the fuck he is. Because he ain't even got no motherfucking goals in life. Like, I can't fuck with you if you just laying up and not doing nothing. Like, her baby daddy, he sits around the house and doesn't have a job for 10 fucking years. Like, and she's like, okay, well, in a way, like, she's, she's not really cool with it, but she's allowing it. Like, for me, I'm not dealing with that shit. I'm just not gonna motherfucking deal with it. And... The longer you allow this shit, it just gets worse and worse and worse. You know what I'm saying? And now you staying for the sake of the kids. Like, why make yourself miserable because your kids? Like, how do you think that the kids may feel? You don't know. A lot of people think that kids don't know shit. They not smart. They not going to figure this shit out. Bitches, let me tell y'all something about these motherfucking children these days. Hold on while I fix the settings. I'm going to just turn this light down. Let me tell y'all something about these motherfucking kids these days. They are smarter than you motherfucking think. They can sense all type of shit, okay? All type of shit. And whether you having a little bit of arguments here and there, they know when their parents are not really getting along like that. Y'all don't have to fucking argue in front of their asses, but they can sense shit. And on top of that, what makes you think that they are going to be so hurt if you were to leave their father that you're not married to after 18 years? Like, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we have to set an example for our children. Like you have three, three children. I'm not really sure how many are girls and it doesn't really even matter how many are girls, but you need to set an example for your children because you got this man laying up in your house and watching him and that's making it seem like it's okay. So if you do have daughters, they going to think it's okay for them to get a man who's a lazy motherfucking bum and don't do shit, but lay up, up around the house and give his dick up whenever he wants to, or whenever they want it. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit ain't cool. Or you're going to have your son's feel Feel like it's okay to be a lazy fucking man and not do shit and not help his woman like you know what i'm saying i'm sorry but you know i went through a lot of shit in my marriage and shit and and my kids seen that shit too and it bothered me and you know i, I was at a point excuse me i was at a point where i would stay because of my kids because this is their father and they love him to death and this is how i felt but then you know what I'm saying i started getting real miserable and i started getting really numb and then i wasn't giving it a cooch up either like that you know what i'm saying my husband would say oh you're gonna give it up like we went through some shit 
And finally, I got just to the point so numb where it's like I couldn't even take it no more. I would just feel like, you know what I'm saying, I don't want to see his face no more. Why he got to come home from work? Oh, I can't stand him. Oh, he's still breathing. Oh, God. I just would, I would just get like all type of ill, ill feelings towards him because of the shit that we was just going through and like the shit that he had put me through. You know what I'm saying? And like, I had finally come to my senses like, you know what, bitch, pack your shit up and get the fuck up out of this town because I needed to breathe. I needed some space. I needed to fucking breathe. I needed to get the fuck away. And you know something? My kids, they missed him, but they totally understood because they had went through the same things that I went through, but not kind of like, you know what I'm saying? They was able to witness shit. So they understood how I felt. And Lo and behold, they still love him and they still, you know, would speak to him and stuff. But they understood how I felt and they was happy that I was happy and that I was back in like my element and realm. And I was getting back to April. Like I was changing. And every time my kids always say to me, ever since I've moved here, I've become a nicer person. And that's great. And I think it had a lot to do with me. I had to step away for a while. Now, granted, I would never want to do that. But sometimes you gotta, sometimes you just have to take that step just to make life a little bit better for yourself. You know what I'm saying? And like, lo and behold, yeah, we did get a divorce. Or if you let him tell it, I divorced him. And I did. Um, and he didn't want that. And I, yeah, I do regret it because I could have just, just got away. You know what I'm saying? I could have just got away from him for a while. And then hopefully things would, you know, but. It is what it is, and I'm glad that we are as one now. You know what I'm saying? We are together now. And, yeah, I do regret being the divorce, but shit happens sometimes for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Shit do happen for a reason. And you know that old saying, if it's meant to be, it'll come back to you. So that was how we worked it out. And we realized we were both wrong in a lot of different avenues in the relationship, in the marriage. And, you know what I'm saying, things have changed, and we've matured a little bit more, too, a lot more, too. So that's 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 how it is for me. But I was never scared to, I mean, maybe I was because that's all that I knew. He was all that I really knew. Even though I have other children to other people, he was really all that I knew. I spent um, like 17 years of my life with this person. So he was all that I knew. And he was all that I loved, too. And I still continue to love him. So, you know, sometimes we have to just step aside. Now, for you, Sherry, you're just like miserable. You got work that was pissing you off. And I could relate to that, too, because I worked at the same job. But, I mean, it was a good job. I worked at Fidelis Health Insurance, um, which was part of Medicaid and Social Services. I worked that job, I think it was like 9 or 10 years. And after a while, it just really stressed me out. But um, I was able to get fired and collect unemployment. And I decided to just work and do my own thing. Um, but you know, I, life is like really, really short and you can't like sit around and wait for shit to just happen. You have to let that shit, you have to make that shit happen. Like for real, you can't sit around and wait for your happiness. You gotta, you gotta take that shit by the motherfucking balls, bitch. And make your happiness like for real. Like if you got this dude that's sitting at home, not doing shit for 10 years, Bitch, bye. His dick ain't even good. You even said that shit. It's whack. You only have sex with him like once every three months when you get horny. And then it lasts for like five minutes. And y'all always do a doggy style. You probably always do a doggy style because you don't even want to look at his face. Um, And you don't even get moist. You don't even get wet down there. Girl, I mean, I never had that problem with my husband. But I'm saying, like, there was, I didn't want to give it up, though. I just was just so upset with him. But, girl, let me tell you something. Don't force yourself to be with somebody that you don't motherfucking want to be with on account of your children. They children, okay? They are children. You are the adult and act like the fucking adult. You need to set your foot down, put your foot down and set the rules, okay? This nigga needs to figure out what it is to have a goddamn job. I bet you if he had a job, you would probably find him a little bit more attractive and more productive. But then again, sometimes that shit don't even work because that shit is just so long overdue and just like, okay, I'm, I'm over it. I'm just totally over it. That, that shit don't help. Let me tell you something, bitch. And I ain't saying bitch like you, like you, you know, I'm, so, I'm talking to you like you my motherfucking friend. And it's funny because I just had to tell my friend that the same thing. Not my bestie, Rebecca, but my other friend, okay? I just had to tell her the same shit. Let me tell you something. Life is short. I am not about to let no man, woman, child, cat, dog, whatever, make the little bit of life that I have 
miserable. When I say a little bit, meaning life go by just like this, okay? You could be born today and be 100 years old tomorrow. That's how fast life goes. You, you know what I'm saying? We don't think about it like that, but life goes by real fast. Time flies, okay? And I refuse to let any motherfucker fuck my vibe up, okay? On a daily basis at that. Listen, let me, I always tell... What I'm trying to figure out is why is my TV doing that shit? I'm going to just like turn it off because I'm going to turn it off, turn it off. Ugh, that scared the shit out of me. What I try, um, I, I say this all the time. I don't like to be around people that have negative um, vibes, like for real. Like all that negative vibe shit, I'm not with it. All of that whining and crying, oh, every single day when I've already had to talk with you and I've already told you what the fuck you do to do. I can't be around that shit all the time. Like, I will cut you short real quick because I'm not about to let your negativity fuck with my day. Like, I might for a day or so, but after a while, I'm not going to. And I'm damn sure not going to be living with the bad vibes, okay? Let me tell you something, sweetheart. Just like you said here, all right? You have, your job has literally sucked the soul away from you and you are dying a slow death but you always smiling let me say something we always smile because we never want people to know what we're going through okay and we always mask a smile but sometimes you know what that shit is hard you gotta stop being fake and phony to yourself and be real with your motherfucking self be real to this nigga and if he don't want to fucking leave then bitch pack your shit the fuck up especially if it ain't a house y'all and got together i'm sorry but you know what it's about to be 2018, Sherry. And your New Year's goal should be to tell a nigga to kiss your fucking ass and go about your business, okay? That should be your New Year's resolution, your New Year's goal. Fuck resolution shit. Your goal for 2018 should be to pack you and your kids up and get to going. Or put his shit the fuck out and find you... A new source of income. Because I'd be damned if I'm going to work at the same fucking job for 15 years that been sucking the life out of me. I mean, I get it. I worked in a call center before. And I'll be honest and tell you, it, it sucked the life out of me for the, the couple of months that I had to sit there. I just can't endure sitting still and on the phone and looking at a computer screen. Because that shit makes me sleepy and tired. You know what I'm saying? So, me, I can't do it. I can't. But, honey... Your life is not going to be just given to you, meaning you can't get, meaning like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm going to be happy. Oh, I got my life back. Like, that shit don't happen overnight, bitch. It's not magical. You got to take that shit on your own. If this nigga is making you unhappy, then what you need to do is make yourself happy. And the first, start, the first thing you need to do is love yourself. Love thyself, bitches. Love thy fucking self, for real. Because if you don't love yourself, then the same shit like this is just going to eat you up inside and fuck with you and fuck with you mentally, physically, and just all the fuck away around. I'll be damned if I'm going to have some dude laying up underneath me for 10 years and ain't got no fucking job and he don't even got good sex. Psh. I tell people all the time, y'all think being cute is going to pay the bills and having big dick is going to pay the bills for y'all bitches. No, the fuck it's not. I'm not saying be a gold digger because, no, it's 50-50. But stop looking at cuteness. A lot of bitches always turn down the, the dudes that ain't a pretty boy. Like, who the fuck want a pretty boy these days? I think they've been played out. Like, seriously, like, I think pretty boys have been fucking played out, like, Back in the days from Chris Williams or whatever his name is, you know, from New Jack City days. I think that shit has been in Albie Shore days. I think pretty boys have been played the fuck out, you know what I'm saying, for the longest. But bitches, go for these niggas that real cute. They look cute in their outfits, knowing damn well they mama or they other girlfriend that bought them that shit. They ain't got no motherfucking money in their pockets, no fucking motivation, no goals, no motherfucking nothing, okay? Then they like, well, he's, he can fuck. Can he fuck his way to get a job application? Can he fuck the boss so he can get a job? Okay? If he fucked the boss, does that guarantee him to get a job? Because if so, then send him the fuck over to the boss office. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, listen. Men, too. 
Don't let nobody miserable fuck up your vibes on a daily fucking basis. Especially for the children. The children are going to be children and then eventually they're going to have to understand. Yeah, they may be mad and upset at first, but you know what? The environment is unhealthy regardless if you guys argue or not. You're unhappy. And sometimes our unhappiness, even though we smiling and shit, that shit still show. Okay? Kids can feed off of that negative energy because that's what you got, Sherry. You got negative energy. And that shit is not cool neither to be around your children, negative energy. Let that nigga go and let him go find himself a new bitch that he can sit up and lay up under. Let him be somebody else's motherfucking problem so, on some real. But don't sit around and allow this dude to suck the life out of you, all right? You got the job and the dude sucking the life out of you? Not cool at all. So you guys, give Sherry your opinion on what you would do in this circumstance. Me, you already know what I went ahead and did. And my outcome was, you know, I moved here and I got a divorce. And now, you know, four years later, here we are, me and him back together. So some shit works, some shit doesn't for people. But you got to do what's best for you. And I think what's best for you, Sherry, is running, bitch. Like, for real. I tell y'all, bitches, get your motherfucking track shoes on and fucking hit hit the pavement okay so this one here is about another relationship so basically i think today's i don't know i i remember the third one that i chose because i go in order like when it was sent to me so if you guys are ever like well i emailed you last week and you, honey i tried to get to them as soon as possible that's why i do three i used to only do one so that's why I do three. I mean, like, if it's life-threatening, well, listen, I don't, if it's life-threatening, bitches, maybe you better go to the police. But if, like, it's urgent, you really need advice, then you can just put urgent. But don't all y'all motherfuckers do that shit because I said that shit, okay? And then it won't even be urgent. Be like, oh, bitch, I just need to know how to put this fucking closure on. Like, really don't? Okay, so this one right here. And I am just, like, playing in this hair. Like, I liked it yesterday. See what I'm saying? And I don't know about today. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'll like it tomorrow. Either way, I like it, but I don't know. I'm such a confusing fucking person in general. Like, seriously, I'm so fucking confusing in life. You know what I'm saying? Like, seriously. Okay. Let's get to the next one. I have been with this guy for over 14 years since we were 18, and we both are 32 now. We have five kids together. Throughout the years, we both had our indiscretion. He had two outside kids on me, but he lied at first like they wasn't his. And I also slept with someone else and got pregnant and had an abortion because I didn't want to have a child with another man because through it all, I loved him more than life. And after the abortion, I found out they could really be that it could have really been his. But we tried to move past that. But he wants me to understand those kids had nothing to do with what he did. But why couldn't he understand my child was innocent as well? Because he did say if I had the baby, he wouldn't be with me. Every time I'm alone, all I do is cry and pray to God. I make it to heaven. No one knows what I go through but me. I'm crying as I write you now. It hurts so bad. Also, he has been in and out of jail. And after the abortion... That was back in October of 2009. I slept with the guy one more time. And after that, I knew it wasn't right because I really do love him. And I have never been with any other guy since then. But he continues to cheat on me. And I kept taking him back, thinking no one wanted me with five kids. But I'm the type of person the outside man would never meet my kids or I would never ask him to take care of them. I've always been independent. This man went to jail on two on a two hundred thousand dollar bond. I posted it the same day. Then he went again. Um, then he went again on a one point five million dollar bond. I pay a lawyer ten thousand dollars to get it reduced. It went down to three hundred thousand dollars. I posted his bond again. I bought this man cars, trucks, expensive clothes, jewelry, anything he ever wanted. I always had his back, right or wrong. Then I end up getting into some trouble, lost my job. It's been hard for me to get another job. And all he does is dog me. Very disrespectful. And I feel suicidal all the time. I'm so hurt. I'm never happy. I'm always depressed. I hope this letter gets to you because I'm never expressed my feelings to no one. It's so much worry I can say. It's so much more I can say, but the pain is unbearable right now. Wow. 
So we're going to call this young lady Wanda. So you see what I'm saying? Wanda has been with this guy for 14 years since they were 18 years old. And they got five kids together. All right. He'd been in and out of jail. He done had two babies on her from some other bitch. You know what I'm saying? She done got pregnant by another dude and got rid of it because he told her he wasn't going to be with her if she had the baby. You know what I'm saying? She took him back after countless times of him cheating on her. You know what I'm saying? She has bonded him out more than once. $200,000, $300,000, bought him cars, trucks, expensive jewelry, clothing, all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? And he stayed cheating on her and she take him back because she feel like Nobody is going to want someone with five fucking children. And she's the type of person who wouldn't even bring them around her kids. And I totally get it because I felt that same way. Like, you know what? If I don't be with this man, I'm not about to have nobody come around my kids. And that's exactly how I felt. Like, I'm sorry. But she just feel like, you know what I'm saying? She has lost her job now. And she's having a problem and just finding another job. And all this dude does is dog her the fuck out. He just disrespectful. He just dog her the fuck out. And because of this, she's starting to feel suicidal. And she's not happy. And she just basically don't know what to do. And she's depressed. And all the pain is unbearable. Sweetheart, Wanda, we cannot let individuals tear us down. Okay? I don't care if the individual is a man or a female. You, we cannot allow individuals to tear us down. This is relationship that you in is so unhealthy and so toxic you know what I'm saying that it's just unbearable for me to even read this like you know what I'm saying what you just said to me basically was like you when you when you said that um you don't think any man would want a woman with five kids what makes you feel that way why would you even think that you never gave it a chance. The first thing you need to give a chance to is yourself and your self-worth, okay, and your self-respect. That's the first thing that you need to give a chance to. Don't worry about what the next man is going to want because I guarantee you when you get yourself together spiritually, mindfully, not on the outside but up here, I bet you a million dollars, well, you bet you got the money like that because you bailing motherfuckers out and shit for 300000 But I'm just saying I bet you five now. That you gonna find Mr. Right, okay? Right now, there's no need to even worry about that shit. What you need to do is find yourself, okay? I tell people this all the time, like you know what I'm saying? Like one you you get out of a relationship and jump into another one. For what? Like, bitch, give yourself some motherfucking time, like for real. Like you need to find yourself, love yourself, find your motherfucking soul for real. Like for me, like I just feel like you know, for you, Wanda, that you need to just get away you have five kids you need to get away from him this relationship is so unhealthy and so toxic like it seems like to me like you buying all you buying all these things for him because you love him you buying his love sweetheart you didn't never mention to me that he bought you this and he bought you that you didn't never mention that but you buying him love that's what you buying you, you're trying to buy the love he ain't even worried about you girlfriend he got five kids by you and then had two on you okay and he can't even respect the kids that he has with you enough to not cheat on their mother that he's been with for like 13, 14 years. Like you can't even respect your kids enough to not cheat on their mother. Like I'm saying like you don't want to drag the kids into the shit. But in reality, that is where the fucking lies. Like these are your children and this is your children's mother. And you're going to disrespect your kids like that and their mother like that. Like who the fuck does that? Like seriously, like for me, sweetheart. Your relationship is so fucking toxic. And, like, don't think that we ain't all been there. Because I'm not, I ain't speaking for everybody, but I will say this. There has been a lot of us that have been in toxic relationships, okay? There are a lot of us that have been in a toxic relationship. And we wake up feeling miserable. We wake up hateful. We wake up unhappy, depressed, stressed the fuck out, and all kind of shit. Like, that shit is, like, not a good feeling. Like, I don't. Like, I, I, I don't like feeling like that, like, in general. Like, who the fuck want to wake up feeling like that? Like, I'm happy just to wake the fuck up because you don't know if you're going to wake up. Like, nobody said you guaranteed to wake the fuck up tomorrow. So I damn sure don't want some motherfucker stressing me the fuck out to where I can't wake the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Like, and when you when you feel like you have suicidal thoughts, like, honestly, 
then it's time that you have allowed this relationship to just to go too far and eat at you and allow him to use you and mentally abuse you. Okay. He has mentally abused you. I don't know about physically, um, but mentally he has abused you. And like, I can't give you the best advice because I feel like you need to really go out and speak to someone because when you say things like you feel suicidal, sweetie, there is nothing that I can say to take that feeling away from you. But maybe it is. I'm not really sure. But I just feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we as women, we should stand together and we should stand proud and we should we should be strong for each other. You know what I'm saying? And like she's saying to me, she she doesn't express herself. Nobody knows these feelings. And that's fucked up that you have to hold all these feelings in. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. I think like everybody needs somebody to talk to, whether it's man or woman. I think like we all need a friend or somebody to talk to. You know what I'm saying? We don't need, we don't, we don't have to have like a whole bunch of motherfucking friends, but I honestly feel like we should at least have one good friend that we can vent to and have a relationship with that if something really goes bad or goes sour that they're there for us and they can be able to talk us through things and it seems like like Wanda doesn't have that because she doesn't express her feelings and like I'm gonna need you Wanda if you do have someone in your family your mom your sister your cousins whoever you feel close to I really feel like you know what I'm saying you should definitely give them a chance and express how you feel because you never know that person that you really don't want to express yourself to can really be the person to help you like you know what I'm saying get you through everything bring you to somewhere where you need to um talk to someone get you the help that you need you know what I'm saying get you the help that you need to get this low down dirty shameless ass motherfucker out your life like you know what i'm saying i think like we all need someone to talk to now be mindful about that shit because you don't want to tell your business to the wrong motherfuckers because bitches will run their motherfucking mouth and talk shit about you like you know what i'm saying i have learned that shit the hard way too like um yeah i don't tell motherfuckers my business unless it's my bestie and i'm not telling her all my business because some shit is just not for you to be knowing like you know what i'm saying like some shit you just need to just worry about what the fuck you're doing bitch like just just worry about you worry the fuck about you but wanda just the same way i told sherry it's the same thing that i'm gonna tell you like life is not guaranteed a daily thing and like you have five children five children that you need to think about don't you think like they need their mother don't you think that they want to see their mother happy don't you think that they want to be able to wake up in the morning and see mom smiling you know what i'm saying and just being blissful and just you know what i'm saying enjoying it in with things with the kids like you know what i'm saying like shit like that like we're not supposed to allow people to fuck up our vibes like that like i'm sorry like like i just said i don't allow like if you got some negative shit going on with you and you got like some bad vibes with you or you got just negative shit or you always whiny, I can't fuck with you. Like I like I said, I will fuck with you for a limited a limited time, meaning I will talk with you, I'll help you try to get through the shit. But if you ain't trying to fucking do to make no changes about the shit, then bitch, I can't fuck with you. I am not gonna allow you to sit up here and keep constantly irritating my motherfucking nerves and soul on a daily basis trying crying about some other the fucking man or about some other fucking job or money i'm not about to do that you either gonna get a job bitch and get your money and get your fucking paper or you're gonna leave that nigga and get on with your life or you're gonna be fucking miserable but i'm not about to allow someone to fuck up my day on a daily basis like you know what i'm saying i have given many people talks about what they should do but if you don't want to take heed to what the fuck i'm saying then listen i'm gonna need you to go all the way the fuck left and out of my fucking visual and don't fuck with me because I don't allow negative shit around me no more. I'm too old for that shit. I like happy shit. Not every day is a happy day, but I don't let nobody's negative fucking vibes fuck up minds. You know what they say, misery love company. And I'm sorry, but I don't need no motherfucking company. I don't even like people showing up to my house unannounced. And when they do come over, I'm bitch, I be wanting them to leave like within 10 minutes of them coming over because I just don't like company. I really don't like people in my fucking house or around me like that. When I want to be bothered with your fucking punk ass is when I'm be bothered with your fucking punk ass. Until then, au revoir or whatever. Adios. But on some real shit, Wanda, 
you need someone to talk to that can help you because when you have a man that's dogging you out and you buying him and doing this and doing that, honey, and your self worth is way worth more than what you think it is. You don't let no man keep constantly cheating on you. We don't we don't do that shit. Okay. The reason why I'm saying we don't do that shit is because, listen, I watched way too many of them shows, Snapped and all that shit, where the women have just constantly allowed some shit to, to um, I keep biting on my lip, my lip inside right here. Women have constantly allowed themselves to be degraded by men, these, these TV shows, and where they allow them to cheat on them over and over again until so finally these bitches snap. And they when they snap, they motherfucking snap, they either kill an old dude or they doing some foul shit. And like, why would you even want to put yourself in that predicament as to, you know what I'm saying? Um, just why would you want to put yourself in that predicament in general? Like, I'm not about to put myself through any of that bullshit. Not at all. Not the fuck at all. So, Wanda, for the best thing I would do is I would definitely go seek someone to speak with. Because if you're having thoughts like this, of suicide, then you really need to speak with someone in general because you have a relationship that you need to keep on. You know what I'm saying? You need a, you have a relationship that you have and you need to continue that with your children. We don't want to hear about Wanda is like not going to make it or because she's trying to kill herself. Like, And I'm pretty sure your kids don't. So give Wanda your advice down below. Now, you know what? I keep hearing the fucking dog bark and it's only 142. I hope these little motherfucking kids is not ringing my doorbell this early for some goddamn Halloween trick-or-treat candy. Because I'll be damned. I don't even have any Halloween trick-or-treat candy. Because I'm, you know, I don't, um, I don't give candy out. I stay, I go and take the kids out. However, my son Wuzzle, him and his girlfriend gave candy out last year. So I had to buy it. But Wuzzle ain't here. So ain't gonna be nobody here to do that. But Wuzzle is coming home. I had to buy his ticket today, actually, November 20th. And he is so happy to be coming home. He's sad and he's depressed from just where he's at. And it's time for him to come home. He doesn't want to be there. So I'm so happy about that. You guys did say, oh, he'll come back. He'll come back home. And yes, he is. He is coming back home. And I'm like really, really excited about that. So we're gonna move on to the last real talk. I'm so sleepy. I feel like I'm about to fall asleep on... Um, while doing this real talk. And I'm going to tell you guys real quick why. So it all started at about, I want to say, 3 something in the morning. Um, my husband called me because he was going to work. So it was 3.30 in the morning. He called me, you know, saying to talk to me before he went to work. And then like after I got the phone him, my phone, my cell phone, kept fucking rebooting itself it kept restarting and my volume was up to the highest because i need to hear my alarm go off so as my phone is rebooting itself it's waking me the fuck up and i thought maybe it was the charger so i'm gonna just unplug it because it's at 100 okay it's fine did it wasn't no it it fucking rebooted itself like 10 times from like three something in the morning to like seven in the morning so it Altogether, it was like 20-something times that it rebooted itself, okay? I don't know what the fuck was going on with the phone. I had to look it up on YouTube and figure out what the fuck to do. And it did finally, it just stopped rebooting itself. And I was like, oh, phew, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what that was about, but it was doing it like every 30 minutes, every 20 minutes. And I was not getting any sleep because I could hear it making that noise when it turns itself on. So, bitches. And then I got up at 6 o'clock, okay? I didn't finally go back to sleep until 5.40. And then I got up at 6 o'clock. When I tell you I'm fucking tired as hell, I'm tired. I got up at 6 o'clock to go for a walk. I'm tired. And if I should have thought about this shit, bitch, why are you getting up at 6 o'clock today on Halloween to go for a walk when you're going to walk like three motherfucking miles tonight to go trick-or-treating with these kids? You could just save that shit for this evening. And took that extra hour of sleep. Because now I'm feeling it. And I'm like super duper tired. And I just want to take a nap for like an hour before I go get mumsy. So we're going to get on to this last real talk real quick. Okay. Because I'm so tired. Okay. Hello Miss April. I enjoy watching your videos. You always have a beautiful spirit and advice. 
you are like family where I live because me and my mom love your wig videos and real talk. This is a long real talk, she said. Anyways, girl, you can call me Leah. Last year on Christmas, my dad's side of the family started drama with us. It all started with my grandmother. Let's call her Bonnie, who was not answering our calls to wish her a Merry Christmas. Me and my brothers, my mom and my dad kept trying to call her. But she would not answer. Finally, when my dad called her for the last time, she answered. My dad said, hey, Ma, all of us was trying to call you to wish you a Merry Christmas. Is everything okay? Grandma Bonnie said, yes. Everything. Where did I go? Okay. Yes, everything is fine. I was just talking to Michael, our baby cousin, who is Latrice's son. My dad said, oh, okay, would you like us to come over this year for Christmas? Grandma Bonnie replied, no, I am feeling sick today and just want to be alone. Well, we all said, okay, we hope you feel better. And if you change your mind, give us a call and we will be on our way. She replied, thank you. I love you. And she hung up. After she hung up, my mom was saying we should get dressed so we can go to go to her side of the family's house. As we got all dressed, my mom's car would not start and my dad does not have a car at the moment. My mom and I was really upset because we really wanted to see her side of the family. Please note my dad's side of the family, but please. Okay, please know my dad's side of the family besides my grandmother at this time is always drama and they love to talk shit about my mother and I. So I never was interested to visit his side, but me and my mom would just go to be respectful. And so they would always have nothing but bad things to say. Hmm. Anyways, back to the story. My mom was really upset and called my aunt, her sister, stating we can't go because her car wouldn't start. My aunt said, no problem. We can just come over there if you want. My mom and I was happy and said, of course. So my mom's side of the family came over and brung food, although we cooked for them, and we had a good time. A couple hours later, my dad's sister lets her, let's call, excuse me, a couple hours later, my dad's sister says, let's call her Mary, texting my older brother a long paragraph. So her, a couple hours later, my dad's sister, let's call my dad's sister Mary, texting my older brother a long paragraph. She was cussing him out saying, you fat ass, you can't call your grandmother. What uh, what has she done to you? Why can't you call her? All of y'all fucked up and some bitches and some of y'all are bitches for that. She is calling me crying saying no one called her and wished her a Merry Christmas. My grandmother is called my, my aunt. Wait, what? My grandmother called my dad's sister um, crying saying no one wished her a Merry Christmas. Y'all ain't shit and I bet you guys are with your ugly ass mama's family, huh? Don't ever call us for anything else. I asked my brother what was wrong, and he said, nothing, don't worry about it. Let's just enjoy our family. I said, are you sure? And he showed me the text message that Mary has sent him. I was really heated, like, I know this bitch didn't just say this shit. Like, be for real, why couldn't she text me or our mom if she had an issue? And plus, our grandmother lied. My mom turned um, face. My mom seen our face reaction and was as we was reading the text in, in, in our heads and said, What's wrong? We showed her the message and my mom was mad as hell. She immediately called Mary and said, what was that message about that you sent to my son? My aunt lied and said, I sent that to everybody. My mom said, I never got the message. And she cussed Mary's ass out with Latrice, threatening to fight us in the background. Now, Latrice is... Um, I don't remember who Latrice is. Let's see. The grandmother was on the phone with Latrice, okay? So I'm trying to find out who Latrice was. Okay, um, their baby cousin, Latrice's baby cousin. Okay, so, damn. Damn. Okay, so, okay, so, my mom said, I never got the message, and she cussed Mary's ass out with Latrice, Mary's daughter, 
threatening to fight us in the background. My dad was upset and began to call my grandmother, seeing why she started this mess. My grandmother never answered. My dad called his sister Mary and said, respect my family and cussed her ass out as well. As we were all arguing, they began to block our numbers because they couldn't handle us sticking up for ourselves. Now let's fast forward. Ever since that incident, we never called our grandmother or Mary and Latrice ever because they was just too much drama. Until October the 8th, my older brother's birthday. Bonnie called and wished him a happy birthday. She did not apologize for the drama she started, nor did nor said why she started that mess, meaning Bonnie, the grandmother. My brother kept it respectful and said thank you. Bonnie stated, Grandma stated that she had never, she had not heard from us, and wait, what? Grandma stated that she had, she has not heard from us and that she loved us with all her heart. Grandma was trying to play the guilt trip by making us feel bad for what she started. My brother said thank you and he has to go back to work. My birthday, October 13th, grandmother blew up my brother's phone saying, I tried calling the house to wish Brianna a happy birthday and she didn't answer. Mind you, my brother was at work. My brother called me and said, Grandma tried calling the house. I was so confused because as I checked the house phone, I did not see one call from her at all and she has my cell phone number. I told my... I told my brother that she that he i told my brother that and he said oh well she seemed upset and said you you could just call her i did not call her at all for the drama she started with me and my family was so unnecessary and side note miss april she is not that old she is 60 years old knowing her rights are, and knowing where she's right and where she's wrong I feel bad for not calling her back at the same time. I won't because although she was a family, she put that on herself to distance ourselves, herself and ourselves with her. Please tell me what to do now. Should I call her and see if she is going to apologize or just keep ignoring her? While I was ignoring her and my dad's side of the family, my life has been peaceful ever since. Please help. Thank you, Miss April. I'm sorry for it being this long. Okay, you guys. I'm sorry about that. So I'm going to just break it down to you. Okay. Hmm. Now, Brianna and her family, you know, they called Grandma Bonnie to wish her Merry Christmas to see if they, if she wanted them to come over. Now, mind you, she didn't, they didn't just call her one time. They called her quite a few times to wish her a happy Merry Christmas. But Grandma Bonnie never answered the phone until the very last time. So this probably was like the fifth or sixth time. Now, they, they wished her Merry Christmas. They asked, you know, what you want, want some company? Do you want us to come over? Grandma Bonnie told them no she wasn't feeling well she just wanted to be left alone okay so they was like all right cool we're gonna go to our mom's side of the family and spend this month spend christmas with them well brianna's mom's car wouldn't start and brianna's father didn't have a car at the time so brianna's mom called her sister and said you know we're not gonna be able to make it the car won't start well brianna's mother's family all came over there they had a great time just a wonderful time now brianna's father's sister mary starts texting shit to Brianna's brother talking all kind of greasy shit like all oh, y'all ain't shit y'all bitches y'all didn't call grandma Bonnie wishing her happy Merry Christmas etc etc meanwhile she just said everybody that's in the family so with the um they just they just get into this big argument this this big overdrawn bullshit because the grandmother is telling Mary nobody called me wish me a Merry Christmas and all of this extra shit now mind you the grandmother's old. Don't matter how old you are. Maybe she got like dementia or Alzheimer's. You never think about that. Like she, she forgets shit. She really probably believe in her heart that nobody ever called her. And I don't really think that she probably didn't. I don't think like for some reason I don't think she started the mess on purpose. Like I just don't want to believe that because she's an elderly. I'm thinking that like she may have some type of mental or medical issues that has basically stopped her from realizing right from wrong or reality you know what i'm saying so like if that were me i would definitely get her checked out because it seems like she's constantly doing this and like you don't want to get into altercations with people or be at war of people because of her ways like i would honestly like have her like checked over like you know what i'm saying dementia comes in all ages um arthritis not arthritis arthritis due to alzheimer's you know they get to a certain age when they forget shit so you know what i'm saying you you never know she might be going through some things that older people go through and that is the reason an excuse for why 
she has forgotten about birthdays or Christmas or whatever. But I would definitely like give her the give her the benefit of the doubt, not the rest of the family. Like she's an older woman, so I would definitely tell my dad like you know maybe you should get grandma checked out because maybe she has like Alzheimer's and she's not really doing that great. You know, saying I would definitely get her checked out. But for the other people in the family, those young ones that be disrespectful like that, girl, you can tell them goodbye. Cause I'm sorry, but I'm not about to put up with nobody's disrespectful shit. I don't give a fuck what family you in. Whose friend, family, what the fuck ever you are. Um, if your life has been peaceful, then continue to let it be peaceful and make sure that those people stay out of your life. But as far as your grandmother, she's older, I would definitely have her checked because it seems like to me, like she has some type of, you know, brain functions that's fucking her up. Um, and maybe she should just get checked out. I wouldn't just like, like just off her real quick, but I definitely would with other family members. So yes, you guys, let um, this young lady be able to know what you think. I'm going to take me a nap real quick. Before I got to get mumsy in an hour. I love you guys. Stay diva and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Thumbs this video up because you love me so much. And I'll see you guys in the soon to come video.